Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, so I'm, my talk is about uh, post-quantum cryptography in a certain sense. So as we know, uh, quantum algorithms are a big threat to classical cryptography in particular because we know that Shor's algorithm can break a lot of existing crypto systems. So we, what we expect is that when computer, uh, quantum computers will be available, uh, cryptography as we know it uh, will be very different from now. So, but this is all about public key cryptography. But now, uh, if you look at the situation in uh, symmetric cryptography, it's quite different. In general, the, the general belief is that uh, there is one algorithm, which is Grover's algorithm, which allows you to, have, to make generic attacks on this, uh, on this scheme. And Grover's algorithm only has a uh, quadratic speedup, so the, the, the way to restore uh, security of symmetric crypto, crypto systems in a quantum world is just to, uh, to double the key length. Actually, that, that's something I heard at CureCrypt two years ago, exactly this sentence. And the goal of this talk is to show you that somehow we can go beyond this claim and uh, show some attacks also, some quantum attacks also on uh, symmetric crypto systems. Uh, okay, it sounds dramatic, but uh, it's not as dramatic as the situation uh, in, uh, in, sorry, in public key cryptography. The first thing I want to say to make clear here is that we don't break AES, so the, the, maybe the most important building block of symmetric cryptography remains secure. What we break is uh, modes of operations, as I will show you later, which is uh, uh, the, the idea of modes of operation is that we are going to attack whatever you can do with AES rather than AES itself. I mean, some of the things we can do with AES. And the second important remark here is that the setting is also different, as you will see. Uh, it's not as easy, somehow, as uh, Shor's algorithm. It's not sufficient to have a quantum computer. We need slightly more. Okay, so let me start with a, a simple example. It's not ours, uh, but uh, it illustrates a lot, uh, I mean, very well how this works. So this is this attack on the event mensor scheme. So the event mensor scheme, uh, it's a block cipher, so it... Oops. Uh, I don't know. Yes. So it cuts the message into blocks here, as you see, and it puts each block in the, the encryption device there and returns a scrambled version of, of this block or this message, right? And uh, more specifically, what it does, it takes the block, it XORs the secret key there, applies a permutation, and, um, and XOR the secret key again, right? This is all it does. So th this is just, this is the picture of this, uh, this, encryption, this encryption, and this is, the, um, this is just the formula, right? And uh, as simple as it is, there is a secu security proof for, the, for, this, uh, for this crypto system, which is that somehow, if you have a sort of uh, black box access for, to a random P like this, but it, which is public, it's available to, every, to everyone, and also you can sort of get pairs of encrypted, uh, so plain text and ciphertext, you would need a lot of either data or uh, queries to P here. So something exponential in N, where N is uh, the size of the block here. On the other hand, it's known uh, that uh, there is a quantum attack against this system uh, for a random permutation P here. Uh, Kuwakado and Mori has pro proven a couple of years ago that uh, you can recover the key completely with only this time a linear number of queries uh, to uh, both uh, the, the encryption, EK, and uh, NP. So how does it work? It's quite simple. It uses uh, something that we've all learned in uh, quantum computing 101, which is Simon's problem. So let me remind you what it is. So suppose the, the input to the problem is this function f here. And uh, there is a promise, which is that uh, if you take if you take some input, some, some, some entry of the, this function here, f of x, so if you look at f of x, sorry, and f of x plus s here for some hidden s, then it will have exactly, the, the, the function will have the same value on both x and, uh, sorry, y plus, uh, sorry, x and x plus s. That's it. Uh, and actually, it's an if and only if. So the, the function has this period, s, and it's an if and only if. So the value is the same if and only if you look at like two, two values that differ by, uh, two inputs that differ by, uh, by exactly this S. 
And the goal of the problem is to, to recover this value s, and what Simon algorithm does is exactly solving this problem using a linear number of queries. Okay, so how does it apply to even Mensor? So we have access to, to this oracle there, and uh, it's called the cryptographic oracle in this context, uh, and to the, the permutation p. So what you can do is build this function here, f of x, which is just the, the, the sum of e, k, or, and p, or the bitwise xor. And you can show it's just a two-line uh, calculation here that uh, this function has a period, which is exactly the secret key k. So if you run Simon's algorithm on, uh, on this function, you will recover the, the key k. That's the idea. However, uh, I have to make two remarks here. The first one is that it's not exactly Simon's algorithm. So just look at the function here. So you can think of, so I, I said already that p is a random uh, permutation, and ek supposedly has to look like a random function, so you, you don't expect it to, you, you don't expect this if and only if condition to hold, and actually it shouldn't hold, right? If you sum two, uh, two random functions, it will have random collisions, and not only for this period. So it's only, it's, it, we just get the only if, and the first thing we did, uh, uh, because it's very useful to get more and more attacks, is to, um, to, to show that uh, in, this context, in this case, uh, the Simon's algorithm still work if the bad collisions, the ones that do not occur with this period S, they, they look random enough. If it looks random, then you just need to, uh, to increase a little bit by just a, a constant factor, the, the number of queries. Okay, so this uh, random, this random, the fact that P is random is actually crucial here, and, uh, but notice that it's, it's exactly the case where we get the, the security uh, classically. Now the second remark is that uh, it's probably more, more important for us. Uh, it's that we need to make these queries to f, and if you look at how uh, Simon's algorithm run, we need to make the, the queries in superposition. We send a uh, uniform superposition of all inputs of f, and we, want, we, need, well, we need to make these kind of, of calculations. So this model, uh, we have heard about it uh, in the conference. It's somewhat, somehow it's called the quantum chosen plain text uh, model. It's a well-studied model, and uh, it's been introduced uh, not so long ago, a few years ago. Um, so what does, it, what does it mean to do uh, this, uh, this kind of thing? So what we've heard also about during the conference is something like uh, frozen uh, smart cards. So I believe if you have a smart card like this, uh, that, so the smart card is supposed to make some encryption, and I think with uh, some... Um, liquid nitrogen and laser, well, I, well, okay, I'm a theoretician, I don't know how to do that, but there are probably some well-qualified people in the audience to try to look at this problem. So if you have an idea how to do that, I'd be happy to hear it. But still, uh, in theory, it's also, it's also very interesting because, um, so this model is very strong, I mean, it makes the, the adversary very strong, and therefore, uh, somehow, if you can prove security in this model, you would expect that any reasonable quantum model is, uh, is secure. I mean, it's secure in any, in any, sorry, in any reasonable model of quantum attacks. Right, and uh, you can also derive some, uh, in some cases, you can also derive um, like practical attacks, in particular some, some other things that we heard of, which is the case of classical obfuscation, or in the quantum internet, right? How would you discriminate between classical and quantum uh, information there? Okay, let me go to new applications now. So I told you about modes of operations. Uh, a mode of operation is a way to use a block cipher to try to, uh, to achieve some other cryptographic task. And the first task that we look at here is message authentication. So in this case, uh, Alice, and, uh, Alice wants to, uh, sorry, she has this message M, and she wants to compute a tag and maybe send it to Bob or keep, even keep it for herself, but uh, such that if an adversary tries to modify the message, uh, he will be detected. So it's easy to see that uh, this should depend on a, on a secret key, K, okay, here. And uh, moreover, we want, we want it to be secure uh, in the following sense. We want the security to depend only on the security of some underlying block cipher. So the one, one uh, construction uh, that has been introduced for that uh, is uh, cipher block chaining. And the way it works is uh, pictured here. So you have your message M there, and you cut it into a number of, uh, of blocks. 
M0, M1, M2. You take the first, the first block, you input it to the block cipher, then you XOR with the second block, input it to the block cipher again, and so on and so on. And at the end, this value tau here is the, the tag of your message. Again, there is a secu security proof for that. If uh, EK is, uh, is secure, then, uh, then the, the whole construction is secure. And uh, for the case of CBC Mac, it has been asked specifically if, uh, if security holds uh, in a quantum case against quantum adversaries uh, too. So what Bonnet and Zendry uh, have done in, the, in their work where they introduced this model is also already to propose like secure constructions, but they asked if that one was uh, secure, and we showed it's not. And the way to do that is again to, uh, to define a function, f, uh, which is, I mean, the, the, the definition of the function is given here, but it's not so important. Uh, what's more important is that this function, once you know the function, it's easy to show that it has a period, and the period is here in red. And when you know the, so, so the first thing you do is uh, use Simon's algorithm to extract the period of the function. And then uh, what you can show quite easily is that these two, so this is one message, this is another message, right? They have the same tag. So once you have, uh, when you, once you have the period, you can forge tags in the following way. You query the cryptographic oracle for this message, and then you know that this other message, you don't have to query, but you know the tag because it's the same. Right, so intuitively this should not happen, and uh, indeed uh, this is a, a security break in, uh, for, from the definition of what a Mac should do. Another example, I won't go into details here because my next example uh, subsumes that one, but uh, is a uh, PMAC. So it's just to show you that um, I mean, there are some tricky parts in the encryptions that we have to deal with. Here the idea is that we have these blocks, M0, M1, M2, and what the encryption does, uh, the, to compute the tag, it XORs with some uh, value delta i, which is called an offset here, and then, uh, and then you put the, the result in, uh, in the block cipher, and you XOR everything to get, uh, to get the tag, and apply a less, one last, uh, one last uh, round here. And the, the delta is computed from, uh, so from the encryption of zero, and this is just a constant that uh, depends on the round, but which is known uh, by everyone. And the product here is in, a, is in a, some, some well-defined algebraic field. So again, uh, this is known to be secure, uh, and, uh, but we can break it by uh, using Simon's, algor uh, al Simon's algorithm, sorry. Um, by breaking, I mean here, uh, make forgery attacks. And the, the way to do that is to extract this value ek of zero. So I will show you in the next example how to do that, but it's a slightly different context. It's a different, uh, different cryptographic task, which is authenticated encryption, uh, in which, so it, it just slightly different. Think about, uh, so we have, again, Alice and Bob. Alice wants to send this time, not the message, but an encrypted version of the message together with a tag, and ideally, you want it to be more, uh, more efficient than uh, applying first encryption and then tagging uh, the message. And uh, so this uh, ensures both confidentiality and uh, integrity. And interestingly, there is a, there is a competition, a cryptographic competition going on now on the, on the problem of uh, authenticated encryption, uh, which is the CSR competition. It's not organized by NIST, so the goal is probably not to make a standard, but uh, at least to make some effort on the research on, uh, on authenticated encryption. And if you look at the candidates, most of, most of them, are, uh, they use something called a nonce. And what a nonce is, is it's a random value that is used by the encryption uh, algorithm. And when the, so when, or like the, or the, this algorithm, sorry. And when you, when you try to encrypt something or to compute a tag, it will choose a nonce and return the, the, the result together with the nonce. But every time you do an encryption, it, ret it will return a different nonce. So this, is, uh, this, will, this will be a problem for Simon's algorithm. Just let me mention here that this is uh, how, you mod uh, how we model it uh, in a quantum case. So this is a problem for, uh, for Simon's algorithm. And so just look at this example. So this is a mode of operation called OCB. Uh, here I just zoomed on the, the encryption part. 
So this is just two blocks, x0, x1, that are encrypted into c0 and c1. And it looks very much like uh, even mensor that I showed you in the beginning. And actually, it's exactly the same, except it uses these offsets here, delta 0 and delta 1, which are uh, different for each block first. But also, uh, these offsets depend on the nonce. So if you try to run uh, the same attack that I showed you uh, at the beginning, since you have to make a linear number of queries, but it's all, uh, every time it's with a different nonce. So it, it cannot work that way. The goal is to extract the offsets or the, the encryption here, but you cannot do it with the same attack just be, because of this nonce-based construction. Uh, nevertheless, we can still uh, find, uh, we were able to find an attack uh, against this, uh, this construction, and the idea is to use a function whose period actually does not depend on the nonce, of course, and the function is just encrypt, I mean, what it does, it, it's encrypt, it encrypts two blocks and XORs them, and you can show that in this case, the, the period is something like this, right? And since these are known constant in some algebraic field, you, from this you can extract uh, the, the encryption of zero, and once you have the encryption of zero, you can completely break the crypto system. So even this nonce-based non construction, it is a good idea in principle to have a nonce-based construction, but uh, in some cases we can also, we can also break, uh, break security here. Okay, so I've showed you uh, three examples. Uh, CBC, PMAC, and, uh, and uh, OCB, and you might think like these are just three examples and they, they might be secure things in the literature. Uh, actually, if, you, if you're not careful enough, if you don't prove security, it's not obvious because even in the short time of the writing of the paper, uh, we were able to find a huge number of applications. I mean, these are, these are the applications the, uh, we, we get, I mean, the attacks we get. And uh, again, in interestingly, m some of them are uh, Caesar candidates. So we can prove that those are not uh, secure uh, against quantum adversaries. Okay, before I finish, let me just uh, mention another slightly different application, but it's all, it, it also uses uh, Simon's algorithm. It's something called slide attacks. It comes from the classical cryptanalysis. Uh, slide at, so we, this time we're not attacking a uh, mode of operation. Uh, we're attacking an uh, iterated structure. So if you have a, su so suppose you have an encryption that consists in, uh, sorry, T applications of the same round function, right? So you apply RK, RK, RK. It's really a, an iterative, iterative process, and it's the same every time with the same key. Then uh, what you could do in principle, it's just a general idea, uh, what you could do uh, in principle is uh, try to find, uh, if, you, if you are able to find a value P here, P1, sorry, that is exactly the encryption of P0, not for the whole, whole encryption device, but for just one round, uh, then you can use it to attack the round function uh, rather than the, and uh, try to extract the key maybe from the round function rather than the whole uh, encryption. And uh, so in some cases, these, uh, this, leads, I mean, this leads to some classical attacks for which we, uh, you can get uh, speed ups. But not exponential speed up, as far as I know, uh, in the classical setting. Uh, in the quantum setting, what we have showed is that um, uh, Simon's algorithm, it, it also gives you an exponential speed up to find these, uh, these slit pairs. Right? So finding a pair here where P1 is exactly the encryption of P0 after one round, if, if it exists, you can find it much more efficiently uh, using Simon's algorithm. And sometimes, for some round function, it can give you uh, an exponential speed up for the whole attack. Okay, in conclusion, for the, for the, um, the more quantum information part, it's easy because I just have to, to quote Scott's blog. Uh, thank you, Scott. Uh, in his blog, he wrote, Simon's algorithm, actually, maybe not as useless as it sounds, right? We all learned in, uh, in quantum computation 101 that uh, the problem it, sol it solves uh, is very unnatural, but in fact it applies to a real life situation. And the other remark is that these real life situations, there are actually I mean, there are numerous, there are a lot of them in this context of uh, symmetric cryptography. And the more uh, cryptographic uh, take home message here is that uh, quantum computers, they are a threat also to uh, symmetric uh, cryptography, not only public key. And uh, 
last but not least, uh, I haven't mentioned it uh, so far, but it's worth knowing that uh, either for encryption or for Mac, there are also constructions that are proven to be secure. So not, not everything collapses, and the situation is much better than, uh, than public key cryptography. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Marc. Uh, do we have any questions? I was just curious, I didn't see ASIC on the slide. Is, have you all considered HMAC to be? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. You asked about HMAC? So I didn't write the function. Uh, uh, oh, no, it's, I don't have HMAC on my slides, but uh, it's, in, it's in the paper. I, I don't remember the detail. I would have to go. Uh, I mean, we can look at that during the break if you want. Any other questions? Okay, if not, let's uh, thank uh, Mark and all the speakers in the session again.